What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again, continuing the Toronto Maple Leafs 2021 player previews today, Rasmus Sandin. Now this guy could be on the outside looking in, but what I will say is that this guy is going to be a staple on this Leafs blue line for years to come. We've seen what he can do at you know the world junior level, we've seen what he can do on the world stage, we've seen what he can do in the NHL, and you know what, he's looked pretty decent. Now before I go any further into this video, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. You know, I'm trying to, you know, advance this channel, get it further. Please leave suggestions down below what you guys think. Um, lots of NHL content on here, mostly based around my favorite team, the Toronto Maple Leafs. But again, do recommend anything that you guys want to see, uh, and I will check it out. Don't worry. Um, I do love talking hockey. I, I love being able to put out these videos for you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I love doing this. So let's get into this uh, and let's look at some numbers before I have more of a discussion uh, on Rasmus Sandin. So 20 years old, 5'11", 183 pounds. Again, not the biggest guy, but also not the smallest guy. 5'11 is a little shorter, but not as short as people make it out to see him. He's left-handed shot, only played one year, not really. He's only played in 28 games, but a uh, former first overall, not first round selection uh, in 2018 by the Leafs. Now, like I said, 28 games played, eight points. Now, he's not here to put up a ton of points, but he is a pretty good puck mover. He'll get an opportunity to play uh, with the skilled players on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, he, take, he, he took a fair amount of shots, 22 shots in 28 games played, and he actually threw 33 hits in 28 games played. Now, I don't think a lot of people give him that credit. Rasmus Sandin actually is not afraid to throw some hits. Um, and do keep in mind, a lot of those games that he did play with the Leafs, he was playing with Martin Marincin. Now, I'm not here to hate people. I, I really am trying to not be so negative in some of these videos. But Marincin is not the greatest. We all know this. And Rasmus Sandin looked pretty good with him. Actually, some people were even like, damn, this low-key isn't a bad pairing. But nobody wants to see that. We want to see Sandin with better skilled guys. Um, you know, he's really developed in the AHL. The Marlies have ha always had a pretty good system in terms of developing. They don't always have the greatest teams. They did for a few years there. Um, but, you know, recently they haven't had the best team. But, you know, we've seen him play with Timothy Liljegren, and he looks really good in the AHL. We've seen him play in the NHL. And there's, I don't want to say there's two sides, but this is just what I've looked at. There's been a couple of times where Sandine has looked a little scrambly. But I don't see that as much as I see the calm, cool, and collected head up, making good passes, Rasmus Sandin. Like, this guy is not getting the credit from Leaf fans that I think he should. I think he's closer to being an NHL-ready defenseman than not. Um, and I say that because, man, just watch the games. Rewatch some of his highlights. Rewatch his tape. He is very calm and collected with the puck most of the time I think that he's got a very very good um, sense of uh, a hockey IQ uh, I, I I just there's there's something about this guy that I really do believe in it you know sometimes I'm I'm a person with that I'll, I'll look at a prospect and think okay I'm gonna let this play out before I get excited but you know what like I'm excited about this dude he is a damn good hockey player and I think he has the hockey sense that Lee fans really want now, there's there's a good portion of Leafs Nation that looks at their depth chart, including myself, and go, okay, he's more than likely a taxi squad type of guy because the AHL is probably not even going to play this year, and if they do, then he'll be he'll probably play games there and get a ton of minutes. But I would like to see him test it out. Like we have to remember, if Justin Hall or Travis Dermott or even Miko Leitinen, but I would I would put it more in the in the looks of Justin Hall and Travis Dermott, if they don't play very well, Rasmus Sandin's going to get minutes. He's going to get a chance. Now, they also have Zach Bogosian. Of course, they brought in TJ Brody. And like I said, Miko Leitinen. I think Sandin is behind every single one of those guys in terms of what the Leafs want for right now. But if Rasmus Sandin comes in and plays a few games and he plays better than a Justin Hall or he plays better than a Travis Dermott or he plays better than a Miko Leitinen, or Zach Bogosian, he is going to take those minutes. I think Bogosian will always get into games just because of his physicality and experience. But Dermot Hall and Le Miko Leitinen, until they you know really prove something, 
those guys aren't locked in. Leighton, again, is a different type of locked in because he signed from the KHL. He'll get the first look out of these guys to get bigger minutes um, because he was like the, the, the best free agent available from the KHL. He didn't sign with the Leafs to, to, to play on the taxi squad. They're going to start him, giving him minutes. Um, but if none of these guys work out, Rasmus Sandin is the Leafs' best defensive prospect, and he he looks good. He really does look good. I'm very impressed with him, and I think a lot of people will grow to love him more and more. And like I said, like looking at those numbers again, 33 hits in, in, in 28 games played is is pretty good for a guy that people are saying is too short. He's, you know, he's 20 years old. He needs to develop more. He's too soft. Like that's a problem. Some people don't, don't watch the games and then they'll just watch some of the highlights and go, I don't like this kid. He's too small. Or they'll just look at, you know, the box score. They go on TSN or Sportsnet or whatever they, they go on and they go, yeah, this 5'11", 20 year old kid, like what, what's he doing in the game? Like I want, I want to see a big tough guy in there. Like, you, you kind of have to look at all aspects of the game. You have to watch the games. You have to, you know, do a bit of research. And, like, it, that's the same thing goes for me. I'm not just going to go and talk on here without knowing how somebody plays. Like, I, I want to watch them. That's like going into a store and looking for a phone. And just before you go in there, go, yeah, like, I know all these are not good because I've seen a picture of them. No, you got to use the phone. You, you have to actually work the phone to know if it's bad or not. You can't just look at a guy on paper and be like, yeah, this guy's 5'11", he's 20, he, he he doesn't look like he's a tough guy, you know, he's got nice hair, so he's probably not tough, he's probably not good, yeah, just get rid of him. And and you know what, it sounds ridiculous, but there's really people like that, there's some of them in these comments, and it's like, guys, like, he's only played 28 games, he looks better than he doesn't look, like, he doesn't look bad, he looks good. Let, let's give him a chance. Let, let him play. Let's see him in some games. And again, I think he's farther down the depth chart be just because of the depth that they acquired. And they want to try these guys first and, and let them grow a little bit more if they can. But I'm telling you right now, the Leafs are high on this kid. They think he's very good. They're not just going to let this guy sit around all the time. If he's going to outplay these guys, and I keep stressing this in a lot of these videos... Just because you like somebody or just because you think they're good or just because they have a contract, like a high paid contract, like if they get outplayed, they're not playing. That's just how it goes. So just quickly, again, the reason why he also is good, this cap hit. If he outplays Justin Hall, they're going to trade that $2 million cap hit. If, they, if he outplays Travis Dermott, they're going to trade Dermott's cap hit away and this will replace it. A nice cheap contract for a guy that's going to be on this blue line for years to come so let me know what you guys think about Rasmus Sandin I like the guy I think he's going to be good for years and uh, I'm I, I really do think he's he's a fantastic defenseman so uh, again I'm not going to overshoot this I do know that there is a chance that he doesn't play up to you know the, the way that we all think he will but uh, I'm not I'm not out here saying that this guy is a top defenseman. I think that he could become a very solid, you know, second pairing guy. He's a good puck mover. He's made some good plays. So leave your predictions down below. I appreciate you guys as always. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.